Hey, my name is Matt Storr and I repair saxophones for a living. And today I'd like to show you a little bit about double socket necks on saxophone. Now, unlike a usual neck where there is a single socket that attaches at the neck tenon and you've got a piece of the neck that slides inside and then you tighten a screw on the body, double socket necks as seen commonly on old cons and old kings such as this Super 20 right here. Um, there we go have a double socket. And at the time this was uh, sold as a you know leak proof joint. And that's one thing about necks people don't realize. Neck tenons are often leaking and when they do it really really has an effect on how the horn plays. So having your neck tenon sealing um, airtight and also having a nice even stress free fit has a lot to do with how well your horn plays. Um, an awful lot to do. I'm not going to get too far into voodoo here, but um, I feel like most of the time, since neck fitting is not something that is practiced commonly, a lot of times when people are talking about the difference between, you know, oh, this, you know, this Mark VI plays great, and this Mark VI plays awful, I think most of the time they're actually talking, you know, assuming everything else is equal, they're talking about neck fit. So, the way a double socket neck works is that you've got a um, inner sleeve and an outer sleeve and the body tenon fits inside the gap between those two sleeves right so I put this neck on here the way this goes on is like that right and that's how it fits on and the airtight seal is provided by the outside of the inner neck tenon seating against the inside of the body tenon but as you can see here on this sax, let's see if I can get the light to show it. I actually stopped mid fit on this instrument. So hopefully you can see, whoops. You see those shiny portions inside that tenon? And then you see the dark portions? I just started fitting this because this neck had a leak and you can see the dark portion right at the end of my thumbnail running all the way down. Um, what that is, is the light portions are where when I have lapped the joint together that there's actually contact between the neck tenon, the outside of the inner neck tenon, and the inside of the body tenon. And that dark spot right there is where there isn't contact, and that means that is a low spot in this tenon. Now this tenon is concentric, so is the tenon on the neck side but that's just a low spot from like some sort of deformity or wear or something like that. So there's a pretty good air leak going on in this instrument and it really wasn't playing very well. It's got some pad leaks as well, which I will uh, attack later, but first thing I'm doing is this neck fit. And that is actually one of the things that is most difficult about these necks is getting them fit well. And if you want to fit them well, you have to understand how they're made. The way that the con tenon is made is that the and this is a New York neck, by the way, that's what's going on up here. Um, but the way that the con tenon is made is that this inner tenon here is actually just an extension of the neck tube. And then this big piece here, that's a groove that's machined into it, and it's soldered on. So this is soft soldered. So you can take this off, and basically it just looks like the neck is a little longer, right? Um, on the king, because king is king and they like to make things kind of crazy, um, that's actually, they used a normal neck tenon, which let me show you what one of those looks like. Let's see if I got one sitting here. Do, do, do. Okay. So this is what a normal neck tenon looks like. It's just a solid piece of brass machined to a shape so that you've got a little shoulder on it and a little recess so the neck sits in there. And what King did is they actually just took a normal neck tenon and then brazed a cylindrical sleeve on the bottom of the shoulder, right? Do you see that there? So this is a silver solder joint going around the exterior here. And then they brazed the tightening screw here. Um, but that means that <laughs> this is like nearly impossible to fix. If this ever gets like really out of round, you have two choices basically. Make a tool that fits inside here or kind of remake the whole thing. Um, a friend of mine joked to me recently, he said, uh, one of my really good customers has a king tenon like that where the joint is starting to separate and it needs fixed, so I retired. Um, 
instead of fix it. You get it? So that is notoriously difficult to fix, the way that they put this together. And that's kind of in keeping with how Khan does things. They did kind of overly complex, um, very you know, high degree of craftsmanship from the people making kings. Um, but the end result is that they are a little bit less repairable than most other instruments. So on this one, if you take it apart, if you unsolder it here, this whole piece comes off. Um, and then if you want to take it apart further, you've got to unbraze this joint, which really isn't going to happen very easily, especially considering this bushing is brazed on here. Um, and getting that even and getting that fitting well against this part is just, that's kind of an amazing thing that they did at the factory. And they obviously had specialized jigs. But doing this as a repair person, I shudder to think of the first time I'll have to try and repair one of these joints after they've gone wrong. Um, Khan, on the other hand, if you need to repair it, uh, you can just pop this piece off. And the you know inside here is just an extension of the neck tube. It's not that huge of a deal. And you can remake this if you need to. And then it just soft solders right back onto the uh, neck. Now, fitting double socket necks is pretty difficult. And the way that you do it is you expand this inner sleeve. Um, and the first thing you want to do is, especially on kings, it seems like a lot of times there's a bit of a um, edge on the inside here, like a bit of a burr. So you take a scraper and you just gently scrape that burr off. And then you use a inside style pedal expander and you put the neck on and you turn that handle and it expands it from the inside so it pushes this inner tenon outwards a little bit and you got to be super super gentle when you're doing that and then you take a little bit of lapping compound and you can put it either in the gap here or on the inside and outside of the tenon here and you lap it in and you have to go super slow if you over expand this inner tenon there's really and it and it won't fit in there's no way that you can shrink that down especially on a king you can't take this off right you can't that's what we talked about here with this braze joint you can't remove this to get at this so it's a one-way street you can only expand this you can't shrink it so expand it a tiny 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 bit and then lap it just to make sure that you don't over expand it and then clean all this out, which is a huge pain getting something inside there to clean out lapping compound. I just take a tiny sheet of paper towel and I soak it in naphtha and I like use something to like jam it up in there, right? And then I clean it out and I pull it out and I do, and I do that ad nauseum uh, until it is cleaned out. Same thing with the uh, con, except if you overexpand, you can unsolder this, but obviously that's not something you want to do. And getting it cleaned out is still almost as much of a pain. It's got a larger gap here, so it's easier to get stuff in between there, but it's recessed, right? Um, another thing with the con is that you'll notice, you know, with that inner tenon being recessed, there's only about that much ceiling surface, whereas on the king, um, there's, you know, about this much ceiling surface from right about here to here. So kings once fit tend to stay fit a little longer, but I mean, you know, getting it fit in the first place is a difficult thing. So double socket necks, they were sold at the time as like being more airtight than a regular single socket neck. And that might be true if, you know, everything else is equal and you have a well-fit double socket neck and a well-fit single socket neck. But I don't really see why it would be true because the amount of surface area doing the air sealing is just the same. Um, and they are way harder to fix if they're leaking. And by this point, most of the saxophones that have double socket necks like Con 6Ms um, and King Super 20s have a leak in the neck tenon and they, need to, and they need to be repaired. And I think actually the difficulty of fixing double socket tenons is a major reason that Con 6Ms have a reputation for playing stuffy because if you have a neck leak, the horn usually plays stuffy, dead, unreliable, just unexciting. Um, and I think this is rarely fixed. This, these neck joints are rarely fixed. So people are judging a horn that has a neck tenon leak. Um, and when you get a Con 6M in good condition with a good overhaul, with the right key heights and a ceiling neck tenon, they're some of the best altos ever made. And they're really undervalued in my opinion. 
Uh, Super 20s are, don't have the undervaluing problem, but they do have the tenon fit problem. Um, this, you know, very rare uh, full pearl silver sonic here uh, recently got overhauled, but this neck tenon's not sealing and the horn just plays awful. Now, even with the other leaks that I've got, uh, that I found going on here, I imagine that the biggest change I make to this instrument is going to be to fit this neck. So that is double socket neck tenons, the ones that you are most apt to see if you're working on saxophones. The King version is a little more robust, but um, past a certain point, very, very difficult to fix. The Con version is a little less robust, but uh, much easier to repair with common tools and no need to braise. Um, fitting them both is done basically the same way. You expand this inner tenon to uh, press against the inside of the body side tenon. And you gotta go really, really slow so you don't overdo it because especially on a king, it's actually impossible to get to this to shrink to it, uh, to shrink it. On a con, you can, but you've gotta unsolder this, which is obviously not something you wanna be doing. So double socket saxophone necks, when they're in good shape, they're great. When they're not, um, chances of getting it fixed quickly uh, and well by someone who hasn't done it before are pretty slim. So make sure you take this to someone who knows how to fit necks and knows how to do double socket necks. And if you don't know how to do double socket necks, um, give it a go. It'll make, if you're a repair person, um, and this is something you see, you know, if you're seeing Super 20s and, and Kings and Cons a lot, fitting these necks is going to make an enormous difference to the overhauls you do. Um, and I think you'll find, you know, using the regular, uh, you know, neck isolating tools that if you do a test, you know, you put it down in here, just past the bottom of this. If you do a test, I think you'll find that most of these are leaking. Um, and once you get them not leaking, the horns just come alive and they're, they're really, really fantastic saxophones, both pretty much all the cons with a double socket neck and all the Kings with a double socket neck are horns, uh, you know, worth holding on to. All right, I hope you found this helpful, useful, informative. My name is Matt Storr. I repair saxophones for a living. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below, or you can email me, or you can call me. You can also check out opensourcesaxophoneproject.com, where I am slowly, slowly building a hopefully online compendium of repair and manufacture for saxophones that I hope will be done by maybe 2030 or so. Thanks for watching. Okay, and I figured I might as well show you the finished product. So. Um, since we've been, since I made the video last, I fit this neck and you can see the inside is now even and smooth all the way around. Uh, there's my pile of naphthed paper towels. Um, here is the king neck. You can see a little bit like the marks on the interior from the expansion, but they're very light because you have to go slow. And that is now airtight. And I'll actually, I might as well show you a um, suction test, huh? Why not? All right, so the first thing we're going to do, and sorry if the quality is different, I'm using the front facing camera on my phone. So here's the leak isolator. This goes in. And you tighten it and it expands that little washer. And then you've got, it's isolated this top here. You have to make sure it goes down far enough that the bottom of the tenon isn't touching the top of that washer. That'll give you a false reading. So make sure it's way past where it needs to be. And then I'm going to insert the neck, which goes on nice and smooth, turns freely. But then, let's see, okay, there's where it starts to get tight, right? Quarter turn, it's locked. So let's see, what I'll do is I will plug the octave hole and do a suction test. And if it's not sealing, you can really easily feel the uh, suction dissipating. Um, if it's sealing, it'll just hold indefinitely and give you a nice pop when you release it. Nice.